Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we talk about the truth using logic and common sense. I've just been working on a list. Well, let's get to it. In the fourth season of Clean Cut, we studied the virtues and fruits of the spirit honored by the church. However, there are many things that modern people think of as virtues, which aren't really virtues in the strictest sense. And that's what I'll be talking about for most of this season. First, though, a special episode that gets back to the question of atheism. You often hear from atheists the claim that there is no really strong evidence that God exists. Today, we'll talk about some of the available evidence. To start with, we need a better definition of evidence than something that would convince anyone. People can often fail to be convinced by a piece of evidence simply because they don't understand why it's convincing. For example, if you see a mouse eating some sesame seeds, but you don't know how to tell the difference between a sesame seed and a mustard seed, you won't understand why this evidence proves that mice eat sesame seeds. The evidence is good, it's just that the person receiving it doesn't have the grounding needed to be convinced by it. However, even if the person in question does have the necessary grounding to understand the evidence, they can always resort to irrationality in order to prevent themselves from being convinced. So whether or not evidence convinces people is not a valid gauge for its strength. The evidence for the existence of God is all like this. In fact, really, evidence for any proposition is like this. You need to understand the claim, the reasons for the claim, and be open to whatever outcome arises from the evidence in order to be convinced, even by sound evidence. Now, there are lots of strong proofs of God's existence, literally dozens. I'll only mention a few for now. Proof 1. Dependability. When we're functioning properly, we think that our senses and thoughts are reliable. But what basis do we have for thinking that? Unless there's a standard that connects proper functionality together with honesty and the truth, how can we be sure that our proper function will lead us to understand the truth at all? God provides this standard, and no other credible explanation does. Proof 2. The Leibnizian argument from contingency. Why is there something instead of nothing? God explains this, and no other credible explanation does. Proof 3. The moral argument. If God doesn't exist, there's no foundation for objective moral right or wrong, and therefore no good or evil. However, moral values do exist. No argument for the existence of moral values could have more strength than this one, that torturing someone for fun is a moral abomination and anyone who says otherwise is mistaken. Proof 4. The argument from evil. Evil exists, and therefore it must have an objective foundation. See previous argument for what this implies. Proof 5. The meaning of life. There is a meaning to life. However, there can't be any meaning for life unless there's someone who gives it meaning. But we do not give our lives objective meaning. We merely make decisions regarding what we will do next. Therefore, God gives meaning to our lives. Proof 6. Value. We recognize that many things have value but they can't have any intrinsic value unless there's a measuring stick for value, which represents the greatest possible value. God explains this, and no other credible explanation does. Proof 7. The Teleological Argument The existence of life in the universe depends on the rate at which the universe is expanding. If the universe were not expanding at precisely this rate, life would not exist. However, the expansion rate of the universe depends on certain universal constants which merely come to exist at the moment of the Big Bang. The odds of these values falling into life-permitting ranges are quite incalculable, in the sense that no computer on Earth could process the kind of numbers needed to calculate them. Why? Why are these odds so small? Why are these values so carefully instituted, and by whom? God explains this, and no other credible explanation does. Proof 8. The Ontological Argument God is a maximally great being. A maximally great being, by definition, exists in all possible worlds with an existence which is necessary. We live in a possible world. Therefore, if it is possible for God to exist, then God exists. I think that's enough to start with. Each of these is a positive proof. Namely, it builds a case in support of God's existence using the available evidence. As I said, there are tons more proofs than these, but any one of these in my mind is sufficient. If you want to get around these proofs, you first need to come up with an alternate way of explaining the facts, which explains them better than God does, and then prove that your alternate theory is more likely than the existence of God, and I've never seen an atheist do that. 
In summary, the atheistic claim that there is no evidence that God exists is false, and that's all there is to it. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.